The following is a presentation of Team Bonding, providing more than 100 live, virtual, or hybrid corporate team building activities for companies around the world. Visit teambonding.com to schedule your event now. Hello, team. Once again, it's me, your new best friend, Rich Renansland. And welcome to Team Building Around the World, the podcast where I speak to people from the team bonding, team building industry from all across the globe. Tonight, my friends, we're doing things a little bit differently. We're reaching all the way out to Singapore to speak to Masami Sato, who is actually the founder and CEO of B1G1. But of course, before we get to Masami, let me take a second and share some love with my supporters. This show is supported by the Catalyst Team Building Network. Find out more about the world's largest network of team building providers at catalystglobal.com. And I do want to thank our friends over there at B1G1, which can make your business a real force for good. Visit B1G1.com to get started. Now, back in 2007, a woman who is a self-described serial entrepreneur created a company that is all about giving. She's been the founder of B1G1, which stands for Buy One, Give One. She's a two-time TEDx speaker. She's an Amazon best-selling author. She's the winner of the Sustainable Business Award and a finalist for the Inspired Leadership Award. Ladies and gentlemen, my team out there, please give a huge round of applause for Masami Sato. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't worry about those people. That's just a small collection of people I keep trapped under my desk. And they're only there to applaud. But they're having a good time. That's why they applaud. Masami, how are you this morning where you are? Very good. Thank you. I'm glad to be here and excited to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really was. I have been looking forward to, to meeting and talking with you since we started this podcast. Because I've been doing Buy One, Give One as a live read in this show the entire time. And almost every company that I've spoken to, as they're part of the Catalyst Network, they work with Buy One, Give One. Hardly any of them could actually explain to me what it is and what you do. So I'm so glad you're here. But I would love you to start off actually by telling my team out there all about you. Who is Masami Sato? So Masami Sato, so from the name, you may guess that uh, I come from maybe Japan or... Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm Japanese, and uh, but uh, for more than half of my life, I've been living in different parts of the world. And um, I started an organization called B1G1 in hmm. 2007. So it's been um, 13 years now. And today, like uh, this week, we are celebrating our 13th anniversary, actually. Oh, fantastic. And Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> so I've been an entrepreneur like for... Uh, the last two decades um but then b1g1 is the thing that uh, we've w been working on um now and mm -hmm. b1g1 uh, which is also known as buy one give one right. as richard said uh, <laughs> is a global giving initiative which helps businesses around the world to embed giving in what they do and as a result create great positive impact through what they are doing so that's b1g1 mm -hmm. and uh, so if you just imagine you know, imagine if every time you had a cup of coffee, somebody received access to life-saving water, or mm. every time you bought a book, a tree gets planted. So B1G1 makes these things happen, working with many different kinds of businesses, of you know, small businesses or bigger businesses, any types of businesses. Mm. And so um, we have a more than 500 carefully selected project in B1G1 that businesses can choose to give to, and we pass 100% of their giving to project and make sure uh, the project that are working on the ground can focus on doing the great things that they are doing. And um, today, B1G1 is 13 years old, and we've worked <laughs> with thousands of businesses. And but many of those businesses are small businesses as well. But then, uh, over the last 13 years, those businesses have together created more than 208 million giving impact. So wow. that's B1G1, the community of businesses uh, we call a movement, giving movement today. That's fantastic, Masami. Congratulations. Uh, now, let's talk a little bit more about you, if you don't mind. How did this start for you? What made you decide? Because I'm reading over your bio that you can find at B1G1.com. It says that you've been an entrepreneur since 2001, running several commercial enterprises. What made you decide that this was the direction you were going to go in? 
Okay. Um, so when I first started uh, business, the first business that I, I started, it mm -hmm. was a food business. And for me, as a person who spend you know, my time as a cook and chef and working in many different restaurants and cafe previously, I was passionate about food. And I was also passionate about providing people happy and nourishing eating experience in the family environment as well. So I wanted to make that happen um, through what I did. So I started the business thinking that if I could provide an opportunity for busy working families to eat more healthy and enjoy the time and find a convenient option, mm. then I wanted to make a business to also contribute the profit to help build a soup kitchen to um, help street kids so that they can have access to food and education. And that came from the fact that uh, I actually spent a couple of years, in a few years, traveling around the world in my youth as a back, young backpacker. And mm. then um, I met so many people and then I started to see so many issues in the world where you know kids are not going to school or people with a physical disability didn't get help. Or there are lots of things that I didn't know why uh, those were happening and mm -hmm. but then I didn't know how to solve those problems either so when I um, set out to start my business and that just happened when I became a mom um, as well for the first time so thinking about my own daughter and how much I loved her and wanted to do everything for her mm -hmm. but knowing that in other parts of the world, there are kids who didn't have much and there weren't enough help. And so I thought I would start a business and at least to do try to do something in my own way. And I wanted to give um, all the profits away uh, when we become successful. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I started my business. And I worked really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and we overcame many, many challenges as well through that. But about six years after I started the business. And then compared to where we started, we were doing relatively well. Like we were, we were, we became a wholesale food business and we were selling packaged frozen meals to more than like 150 retail stores across many parts of Australia. Amazing. <laughs> but then one day I, I stopped and then I suddenly realized that even though we were doing better, and we were selling more, mm. we weren't doing anything because we were too busy and <laughs> we still didn't have enough money because we were putting all the money back into business. Right. And more right. better packaging or uh, more marketing or uh, like most people who are or, like most people who start a business discover all that money's got to go back to the business in the beginning. Yeah. So we believe that we had to grow the business first or become really successful so that one day we could do good things. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, if we are waiting for good, good, big things, then it might not happen. And then I realized that what if, like, instead of trying to do big things, we did something small, which is every time we sold a product, mm -hmm. we gave a meal to a child. So that's the kind of transition into b one g one thinking. <laughs> okay. That's actually what I wanted to get into next. What is the b one g one thinking? I mean, what is the... <laughs> I don't want to say just methodology, but the philosophy behind B1G1. I believe that every business starts with a sense of purpose um, because they, the, the owners you know, of businesses actually care about something. And mm -hmm. that's why they start different businesses. And some people might care about, you know, quality of education or people's well-being, physical well-being. Okay. So that's why they start a health business. Or, and in my case, I started a food company. But then as a business owner and entrepreneur myself, I met many other great business people. And I knew they really cared and they wanted to do something. They wanted to see a um, great future for their children and grandchildren and for their community as well. So... I thought, what if instead of trying to do something big, we do small things? And what if we made giving really easy and tangible mm. um, and meaningful for that, so that every small business can say, every time we achieve something, we serve a customer, we want to create a positive impact in this way or that way. Mm. And um, back then, there was no such thing <laughs> 13 years ago. And right. Um, even though I was so determined to make my own business 
succeed and grow. Mm. But after a while, I realized that if there was nobody doing this, you know, this making things easy for p- business people to make a difference, then um, there are lots of other people who wanted to run food businesses. So I decided to sell my food company in Australia mm. and then move to Singapore to start B1G1 as a global giving initiative to precisely make that happen. So that's been 13 years um, in the making <laughs> wow. of that idea. Amazing. Masami, can you actually give me one second here as yes. we're talking about this? I do need to pay little bills on my end. So. Let me actually take a moment and talk to my team about one of the partners of B1G1, Catalyst Team Building Network, an association of team building providers. With representatives in over 90 countries speaking more than 20 languages, the Catalyst Network is widely regarded as the voice of the team building industry. Network members share resources, best practices, and business opportunities. Catalyst partners are learning from each other and pushing the boundaries of what is possible in team bonding. Catalyst Network members share a common goal of creating highly relevant, socially responsible, good value experiences for their clients. So for more information, please visit CatalystGlobal.com. The Catalyst Team Building Network, the world's largest network of team building providers. All right, we're back with Masami Sato. Now, Masami... It's it's a fascinating idea, convincing businesses to give away money just to be part of not necessarily just their, their community that they're centered around, but the global community. But let me actually ask you, how does it work? What is it that, that you actually do for these businesses? Idea is very simple, isn't uh-huh. it? <laughs> Buy one, give one. Um, but how does it work? That part is actually a little bit more complex than the idea itself. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> so, yes. I, I'll be honest with you, personally, I have been podcasting now. I have interviewed uh, over 20 individuals, some some couples, um, and I've asked them all about B1G1 and what B1G1 has done for their business. And none of them can give me a straight answer as to how it actually works. So that's why I have you here to ask you. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So let me explain. (laughs) Please. And then I'll tell them when next it comes up. (laughs) (laughs) Good idea. So so when we created the B1J1, Mm -hmm. we were clear about three important things that we had to make work because charity giving isn't scarce, you know, the charities have been existing for a long time and there mm. are many of them and the giving opportunities are plenty as well and people can donate their money as whenever they want to donate these days so why is b1g1 important for businesses yes. so there are three things first thing is impact b1g1 is always about the impact that businesses can create so when charities say oh please donate to us Mm. That doesn't mean people understand where the money goes. So B1G1 works with charity organizations around the world who who meet certain criteria, Mm -hmm. such as um, that they have a good financial recording and also good track record in what they are doing. And then once they pass all that criteria, then we would work with them to break down their project into micro units. So if it is about building a well to give access to water to people, then we find out how much the well costs and how many days or how many years or how many months those things last. And then how many people that item will provide benefits to. And so when we look at all these figures, then we will come down to small impact units such as giving access to days, um, water, clean access to water could be just one cent. Um, for one day per person or uh, planting one tree could be $2.50 in this region or $3.40 in that part of the world. Mm. And so we have uh, all these projects that were created in B1G1. So what happened is when businesses come to us and join us, they could go to create the giving stories such as every time somebody participated in the Catalyst um, team building activities, we want to educate a one, one child for the entire month, you know, in this part of the world. Okay. Or, um, yeah, every time I sell a book, then I want to plant one tree. Mm. Um, 
and so on. So all the businesses can have their giving stories and we have the platform, like the giving platform to allow them to do that. And then also see the number of impacts being created over a period of time. And for example, embed that on their website as a live counter. Or So we exist to provide benefits to businesses so that their giving becomes impactful. And then the second element is habit. So okay. if giving is once off, that you donate, you know, ten thousand dollars and then present a big check on stage, mm-hmm. but then if it doesn't actually create ongoing um, uh, activities, right. then that one-off giving may not be truly uh, sustainable in the long run. So B1J1 helps businesses create a habit of giving. That's why we ask members, our members, to embed the giving in what they do mm. rather than uh, just do one-off giving. Okay. So. When lots of businesses are creating a habit of giving and continuously doing the giving, then we no longer worry, need to worry about like fundraising big campaigns and depend on those things mm-hmm. right? because then businesses are happening every day anyway without us thinking about it. So that's habit, the second element. And then the third thing is connection. Um, we want the giving um, the sense of giving to unite people together. So we don't want to just the businesses to donate the money and say, hey, like that was good, look at me. Mm-hmm. But we want the businesses to be able to say to their teams and customers, um, thank you for being part of what we are doing because together we are creating these impacts. And so we help businesses to create and form this kind of sense of connections. And we try to do that better. So that's why this is not just about a charity portal, but it's a community of businesses coming together and inspiring each other as well and sharing their ideas. So um, that's kind of three things that we do. And we do that with um, business membership program. Uh-huh. So we never take a percentage of charity donations from, you know, the, m- most of the fundraising initiatives probably take a percentage. And then they uh, cover the cost of overhead and so on from that percentage of donations. Mm. But in B1B1, every cent you give goes to the project because if we take percentage from the one cent that you give to give a, give access to water mm-hmm. then it can't create water <laughs> so we make sure 100 percent goes and we top up bank charges as well but mm. the thing is because then the question is how does that work in terms of operation and cost and so on right so we have a membership model where businesses can join based on the company size so tiny business can join um as a member for just a dollar just one dollar a day right like so then that one dollar a day goes to the development of initiative and then mm. all of the giving that they do will go to the project and so that's the kind of work of b1g1 and uh, um we are uh, really grateful that even though what we are doing is fundamentally helping a business to give away their hard earned money, <laughs> <laughs> but we have uh, many amazing business people who still say, well, I believe in that mission. We believe that the businesses with a real sense of purpose can change our world. And I want to be you know, part of it. I want my company to be part of it. So right. um, it's a growing community today. <laughs> Fantastic, because it is important that they all know that this isn't just, like you said, a one lump sum, you know, given every couple of years. This is just small little percentages every day that help to build up over time. Mm. Good. Um, Let me ask you this, though. Does the company have any choice in uh, like a list of the charities that you donate to? Yes, you, you, that, that any businesses that are part of B1J1 can choose the project they want to support. Okay. Some companies want to give, uh, you know, globally and spread the giving to many different projects. Some companies could be very focused on specific type of project like um, human, human rights issues or mm. um, it could be environmental issues. So we have uh, so many different projects and some companies might want to give um, some of their giving to local projects and then some of the giving goes to international projects. And B1J1 actually, in fact, has stronger focus on global giving um, rather than we, we are the best place. Like B1J1 is the best place to do lots of local giving mm. you know, in terms of variety. But the reason why we do that is, of course, like businesses can always find and give to or support or volunteer their time with local charities 
if they want to, like in a small community group in their town or uh, sports teams, and they go and then uh, use their time and coach the children. So they could do all those things, and we want them to do that in their own way. But then at the same time, we want to encourage global giving on top of it. And the reason why is that even though we naturally feel closer to the people in our own community or in our family or friendship circle, Mm -hmm. but today our lives and our businesses are supported by this interconnected web of amazing people and businesses and communities around the world. And because of the fact that they do what they do, we have goods that benefits us or tools that we use or energy that we need to drive our equipment or so all those things are coming from um, some form of support and sometimes sacrifice of people around the world and so if we could actually embed the giving in a way to express that gratitude we have then we can together help solve many complex um, challenging issues and then in the long term create a more holistic and sustainable world so that's the idea of b1j1 Fantastic. Hold on one second for me, if you don't mind, Masami. We do have to step away one more time. And we'll talk about yet another partner of B1G1. This is a company I am very proud to be a part of, Team Bonding out of Stoughton, Massachusetts. Team Bonding was founded over 20 years ago with one simple question. How can employees make a great time while fostering strong, authentic bonds between people who work together? They've created a catalog of innovative events using the power of play as a learning tool and tapping into the correlation of work and play. From scavenger hunts to Jeopardy and so much more, the team bonding of activities, live, virtual, and hybrid, maximizes the impact of team building with an accent on fun. Visit teambuilding.com to schedule your event now. Team bonding, when you want seriously fun results. Masami, I am in awe of you. I really am. Just listening to how, I mean, it is clear that you love what you do and how important it is to the world at large. I just have to ask one question seriously. How do you make a living? How, how is it that B1G1? Because if this fails, then everything stops. So how does B1G1 keep going? As I said, like the dilemma, you know, uh, initially was like uh, how to make this work financially yeah. you know, as well. Because if we are uh, doing 100% of giving going to a project and then we could not sustain our operation, even if our work was a good work, but we cannot continue doing it and mm. we cannot continue to scale what we are doing. So, um, you know, over the Uh, decade, we learned so much about it. And then in the earlier days, when we had less benefits we could give, such as more complex system, you know, benefits or tools, uh, features, and uh, also marketing collateral. So we had uh, very few of these things in the earlier days. Mm -hmm. So all we could say was to appeal to people's uh, sense of inspiration and aspiration to ask them to join this initiative. And then um, people came as long-term partners of B1J1 and Mm. then contributed toward the movement. But then today, we are switching our focus more toward making sure that giving will add value to every business, small and big. And then as a result, we um, run a membership uh, program, which start from just one dollar a day so small company you know tiny business or startup could say well i want to make giving part of what we are doing from day one we don't have a lot of money but we have a lot of ideas and we want to engage and we want to create impact through the business journey then it's easy for them to join b1j1 (laughs) so with that then we need to find the right optimum balance of scale and then sustainability Mm. Um, so today yes like with the great work of our team and we Mm. have a very small team you know for what we are doing (laughs) and they work really hard and they are very smart creative people and they come and work with us for that shared mission so we may not be the kind of highest paying um, organization <laughs> <laughs> but we are so lucky to have all these amazing people to come and work with us and we build this together mm. and um, so we are confident because um, to continue to grow this initiative doing this but we also receive a lot of support from our business community so look at what you are doing Richard mm-hmm. you said oh please come and then 
speak at uh, on our podcast or Catalyst community is all behind us and supporting B1G1, spread the word. So when all these businesses that we already work with are helping us spread the word, mm -hmm. you know, of course, we don't need to actually spend advertising you know, money or because word of mouth is very powerful. Hmm. <laughs> and then this means that those businesses' contributions, we can actually scale our initiative. And the more businesses that join us, that create uh, more capacity for B1G1 to do better job in improving our systems, improving our materials or communication and so on. So that's kind of like how we make it sustainable. And for me too, the thing is, this is my life's work and I love what I'm doing and I feel mm. so grateful. And then I am part of employee, one of the employees of B1J1. So that's kind of, <laughs> I make sure that I can continue doing what I'm doing. And yeah. then, but then eventually we want to, kind of start empowering more leaders in our community to drive this <laughs> together with us. So I'm looking forward to the next phase because it's been more than a decade. Yeah. But the next decade is going to be very important for our world because we are facing many, many bigger issues now and sustainability or issues around some conflict. or So those things are becoming a bigger threat today. So mm. Perhaps B1J1 in the next decade need to move a bit faster than the last decade. And in order for us to do so, we need to have a real buy-in from businesses, individuals, and communities around the world to come together to make great things happen. Yeah, because the, the entire purpose of this show is to prove that nobody can really do anything alone. It is a team effort to get things done. Yeah. And mm -hmm. not just part, as you're proving, not just part of a local team, even though I'm sure I'm looking at your website, I'm seeing a bunch of smiling faces from your team that you have there at B1G1, but you're also yes. part of a global team, that this is just mm -hmm. one world community that we're talking about now. So that mm -hmm. is yeah. amazing. Is there anybody you want to give special shout out to, some special love to, especially as part of your anniversary? <laughs> well, actually, I love to give credit to every person you know Good. who has chosen to join and belong this community mm -hmm. um and uh i'm so grateful for catalyst community and and, and their their partners mm -hmm. um because you know through that we've actually created so many impact <laughs> and at the same time uh, because uh, Catalyst is doing events and connecting with lots of people and mm -hmm. businesses mm -hmm. so that helps us spread the word as well so I'm really grateful for everybody who is part of the Catalyst community network and then the entire B1G1 business for good the community of businesses and individuals around the world. Now here's the thing I am well I've been an actor for 26 years, uh, an actor and a writer and so forth. I'm, as my mother has described me, a master at all things I can't possibly make a buck at. So <laughs> I don't have the money to give to B1G1, even though just talking to you, I just want to open up my checkbook now. Is there anything that I can do, though, to help you and help your company and anything my listeners out there who might not be able to, especially now in the middle of a pandemic with the recession that we're hitting, um, is there anything they can do to help you out? Sure, because um, B1G1 is not about the charitable donations. Okay. Right? Like, because otherwise, uh, whenever I'm going on somebody's show or uh, program, then I would say, okay, donate now. Sure. <laughs> right? Like, so that's not what B1G1 is about because B1G1 is about businesses embedding giving in what they do. As a result, every person can participate in creating the positive impact, whether or not they actually donate anything. Mm. So... The great thing that you can do is actually to think about um, businesses that may resonate with this idea of making effective giving in what they're doing. So if you are going to, you know, favorite local cafe, they might enjoy learning about the way they could impact, you know, they could do more. Um, for the world. Mm -hmm. And so if you are uh, being part of spreading the word and said, oh, have you heard about the B1G1? <laughs> or, you know, because um, that, that would be cool. And if you're working for a company, then mm. you might recommend to your company about this, you know, because it's easy to do it from one cent, you can create an impact and uh, it's easy to join and work with this community. Then um, your business might want to be part of this. Fantastic. Alternatively, 
if you are already working for a business that's part of B1J1,、mm-hmm. then for you as a team member to learn more about what's going on, or think about how your company and team can together make an even greater impact or embed the giving in what you do or express your joy of giving and gratitude to your clients and customers, how to do that. So, as a team member of giving business, then if everybody is like, Taking greater stake in how things are done, then that benefits the business, of course,、um, but also it creates so much more potential impacts in the world. So there are so many things actually you can do. <laughs> Great. Is there anything that, say, like a small business can do to really shape just their general environment? Anything you would recommend to them?、Mm. Small businesses have a great power. And we talk about this idea power of small because、mm. actually, Small things could be much more impactful than big t h i n g And that's why we focus on micro giving than saying, like, oh, this is the most important type of giving. Let's build a big school or let's、um, run this campaign.、Mm. Because when we know something that needs to be done、um, happens habitually, then changing the general habit is much more impactful than trying to get to the goal, you know, such as you, know, you want to become healthy.、Uh, can you just suddenly go there? Or is it that you need to make lots of little c h a n g e and make a big difference in the long run? And so the, there is a power in small, and small businesses can do so much if they don't worry about the smallness of what they can do today. So, if they said, okay, every time I actually have a meeting with a client, successful meeting,、mm-hmm. I want to celebrate that by planting a tree and give like a couple of dollars. And oh, I can do that from、nice. today. And、I've, I'm going to track that. <laughs> then, just by one small business doing it, then if it inspired somebody else to do that too, because they then no longer worry about being small.、Mm-hmm. And then imagine if. Through the day to day interactions of those small businesses, many businesses start to do this. Then it's so much more profound than one big foundation or organization doing something as a result of, let's say, CSR. So I think small is much more powerful than big. Well said.、Uh, as, as a small person myself, <laughs> well said. <laughs> Finally, Ms. Tommy, I just want to say thank you again so much for coming on board. You were absolutely amazing, and I wish you luck with everything that you have going on. I hope we can talk to you again maybe in a few months and just see how everything has come together and has really built up for you. Yeah, I would be delighted to do that. And thank you so much for having me here. It's、nope. been a great joy、um, to be here with you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, my team out there. Look for Masami Sato、uh, everywhere. You can find her on YouTube. She's been a two time TEDx speaker. Please look for her books Joy, the Gift of Acceptance, Trust, and Love, Giving Business, Creating the Maximum Impact in the Meaning Driven World, and Better Business, Better Life, Better World. She's done everything. She's all over the place, and she is amazing to talk to and to listen to. So give her a look. And of course, if you're, especially if you're part of a business, Go to b1g1.com and learn all about how you can make just the smallest amount of giving a priority for your company. Now, Masami, I hate to do this to you because normally I have people who are in the team building industry on. And one of the things that we do is play fun, silly little games with our audiences, our, our guests, our clients, so that we can energize them and get them going. And I'm going to do the same to you. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to put you on the hot seat with our speed round. What this is for the next 60 seconds, I'm going to ask you just a series of completely innocuous questions. Your objective is to try to answer them as quickly as you can. First thing right off the top of your head. Do you think you can do it? Okay, I will try. Great. <laughs> I don't know how competitive you are, but the number to beat for me is 13, just in case you wanted to know. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to hear,、okay. s- going to hear some music. I'm going to start asking questions and we will get going. All set? Set. Then away we go. What's your name? Masami. How many children do you have?、Uh, two. <laughs> Which one's your favorite?、Uh, both. Good, nice answer. Do you have any pets?、Uh, no. Okay.、Um, Which book are you most proud of?、Uh, giving Business. Excellent.、Oh, legacy, actually. Two. Okay. <laughs>、um, what would you do if you were invisible for a day? Sneak 
into people's kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, what's your favorite movie? Uh, Forrest Gump. Nice. Um, would you rather live for a week in the past or the future? Future. Nice. Um, what's your favorite children's story? Oh. Uh, uh, Toy Story. Excellent. Nine. A very respectful nine. Well done. <laughs> All right. How can my... somebody do 13? <laughs> <laughs> They were firing off answers like it was their job. It's You should look at some of my podcasts and just see how people answer okay. some of these questions. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I will be practicing this. <laughs> Great. Yeah, get ready for next time. Although next time, I'll have okay. a whole new game for you. Team, please give a big round of applause and thank you to Masami Sato. And remember, go to B1G1.com to learn all about not only her, but her industry and how she's trying to make the world better. And... As for me, thank you all for listening to Team Building Around the World. If you like this show, please share it with a friend or a colleague, and we'd be so grateful if you could subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your favorite podcasts and leave us a favorable review. If you don't want to leave us a favorable review, that's fine. Just forget about it. All of our past episodes can be found at teambonding.com. And there we go, my friends. One more time, I have been Rich Rinsland. This has been Team Building Around the World. And remember, if you are within the sound of my voice, you're on my team now, and I have always been on yours. Thank you, everyone, and we will see you next time. It's been said that you learn more about a person in an hour of play than in a year of conversation. So why not put your coworkers to play with the help of the team at Team Bonding? Team Bonding was founded over 20 years ago with one simple question. How can employees have a great time while fostering strong, authentic bonds between people who work together? Their catalog of innovative events includes scavenger hunts, Jeopardy, and much more. Each activity, whether live, virtual, or hybrid, maximizes the impact of team building with an accent on fun. Visit teambonding.com to schedule your event now. Team Bonding, when you want seriously fun results.